the Buddha left many sutras in which is described how the Buddha taught what kinds of methods to different disciples in his time. And some have learned some of these methods, like you can live long time, at least thousand years or more, and then you don't have to eat. If you don't have food, you don't have to eat. Or you can fly in the air, and you can uh, see the future, something like that. You can do all that, even without becoming a Buddha yet. You can. Hmm. And then you can live long. But then uh, what to do if the whole world is kaput, huh? To practice that kind of method. Later, the Buddha already practiced it. So he had it before he became a Buddha openly and was openly teaching others. The first ones were the five brothers that he taught the Four Noble Truths, and from then on it spread out, and he taught everybody. But before that, the Buddha already learned those magic powers, like flying in the air, walking even on water, or disappearing, or appearing in front of people from nowhere, and knowing people's minds, hearing from far away, and seeing from far away, without that person or that scenery in front of you. You can do all that. But... There's a condition for learning this, is that you cannot interfere with anybody else's karma, no matter how small. Even the karma of the worm, you cannot. You just let it all be. Worry only about yourself and your practice. But then it's not that easy. You have to practice in loneliness, in the place where nobody ever comes to see you. It could be forever, it could be for years on end, until you really master the technique, the method. You could stay in your cave or your room. You have to live in the mountain somewhere far away from people that nobody ever comes to disturb you. And you cannot interfere with anybody's, any living beings, even trees or plants, karma. Because if you do interfere, then their karma will drag you down. You can't continue practicing upward. But the Buddha practiced before before he realized and he attained Buddhahood again under the Bodhi tree. He practiced all that before. That's why he ate so little and drank so little also. But he realized all that and then he chose a middle way. Then he became open and taught people afterward. But then he had become Buddha already, so he couldn't teach people because he was appointed to be a Buddha for teaching people. And sometimes if you practice to live long, you have to sleep, meditate for long, long hours, or many long days, many long weeks, many long months, or many long years. You can't get out of your room or your cave. Mostly they live in the wilderness. You know, they might find just a simple cave or something. And you can't eat anything, you can't drink anything. You can't see anybody, can't do anything for anybody at all. Just stay in the cave or in your private area sleep, meaning meditating and contemplating or just be in a trance forever like that. And it's very lonely, very difficult to bear, very lonely. You can't have radio, you can't have telephone, you can't have television. You can't read anything except whatever teaching the Master gave to you. Like maybe some sutras from the Buddhas or from the Tao Te Ching of whatever suitable sutra the Master gave you, you just have to read that only, and nothing else. You have nothing, nothing, completely nothing. You'll be in hibernation for days, weeks, months, or years on end. And then if you well, you're sincere, and you can bear all that, then you can live long, many hundred years, a thousand years, or many thousand years even. But you can't do anything much for this world, except giving them some of your... Naturally, some of your blessings would come out to someone who has affinity with you, or you wanted to teach them something to pass down the practicing spiritual tradition in your lineage. But not a lot, not a lot. You can't do anything to interfere in this world at all, not even for an end. Like if an ant is dying or drowning, you can't even extend your hand and lift him up onto the dry land. If a bird person is injured, you don't take him or her back home and put medicine on him or her. You leave everything be the way the universe has arranged or appointed that way. So it's not like you want to practice anything. You find the master and you can have it. No, sometimes you find the master and the master doesn't want you. 
It's difficult to recognize who's a master anyway. Even if you go outside and see uh, some um, real uh, saints, yeah? I like Lao Tzu, if he lives forever and he just uh, looks like ordinary people, how would you recognize Lao Tzu? Huh? How? They have also magical power. They could even change their appearance anytime to make them look like a girl or a boy or just an old person, normal, walking with stick, anything like that. So you can never recognize who is who. And even if a Buddha comes back down here, how would you recognize him? Huh? If he comes down and begins teaching, let's say he didn't have to go through the birth, and he just came direct from Tusita heaven, came down and sat in Times Square of New York. Hmm? He doesn't need a house. Of course, the Buddha now is a real Buddha from heaven. And he came to New York's Times Square and started preaching. And people asked him, who are you to preach like that? Even so wise and so moral and not asking anything in return. How do you do that? Who are you? If he says he's a Buddha, oh... It's lucky if he won't be cupped by the police and brought to jail, don't you think? Yeah. Or room him out even, kick him out of there. Nobody would believe him if he sit there and say he's a Buddha. Nobody. To teach this world is harder than climbing Mount Sumeru or the Himalaya Everest without any equipment even. To climb the Himalaya, to climb Everest, or Mount Kailas without any instruments, without warm clothes or food. It's even easier than to teach the people in this world. Their karma is so heavy, their ignorance so thick. It's difficult to penetrate through. I'm so happy, so lucky to have so many disciples who have so much attainment and so much belief in the truth and the teaching. Truly embrace the Kwan Yin method, and sincerely practice every day. It's not only good for themselves or their right generations, but good for the world, for everyone around them, wherever they go. They bring blessing, happiness to others. Even Supreme Master TV, remote, they don't see us. They don't see me. It's blessing has no end. You have all the experiences, you know that. My disciples, of course. I'm not talking about outside people. Some outside people also see the master, for example, myself, manifestations, went to their house, helping them in time of need or in time of accident, but rare. Because nowadays, the end times, most people are more deaf, more blind, more dumb than ever before. Even in the Buddha's time, we didn't have a lot of pollution. People's minds were still pure and simple. They ate simple food. They were not poisoned by any bad teaching or any false masters. Oh, there was Devadatta, of course. But even then, when the Buddha wanted to speak and explain the real truth, many thousands of monks walked out on him and didn't want to listen because they thought they knew everything already and the Buddha was faking. Oh my God, what for the Buddha would have wanted that? He was a king. He was a future king. He was a prince. He could have anything else he wanted have any wives he wanted. He didn't have to go and humble himself to be a beggar like that. And what for he had to teach all these ignoramuses? For what? What could they give him? As monks already, what could they give him? The monks are supposed to have no house, no money, nothing. So after they all walked out, the Buddha said to some of his followers, the faithful left behind, Oh, good. Now all the rotten seeds have gone. We can and do our real things here. Something like that. I don't remember the exact words, but something like that. Meaning the Buddha wasn't sad that all these thousands of monks walked out on his lecture, but he was kind of happy. He knew it had to happen because these people, they were too heavy, too thick. No IQ, no reason, no logic, no enlightenment. A little bit, nothing. So the Buddha was happy that he didn't have to deal with them. Because those so low, so low like that, below astral, below human level, it's very difficult to bring them up. I know that myself from self-experience. Oh, my God. They just give you no end of trouble. They could poison you. They could kill you by different means. Even just giving you some fruit as offering, 
like from the dragon fruit plant with a lot of spikes on it. There are two kinds of dragon fruit plants. One doesn't have spikes, and one has spikes all over, and even their fruit, when the fruit comes out, the spikes are all over on the fruit. And one of them even offered me, and he said he already peeled it off. But when I eat it, oh, so many thorns stuck in my tongue. I could not even speak. So painful. And I wonder how I even escaped from that. I went to the doctor, but I wonder, at that time, I wonder how all the spice could be seen even, already buried inside my tongue. Oh, now even thinking about that, I thought, oh, my God, how could that be? Many other things they do. They don't have to do it on purpose. It's just their low level being used by demons to harm you, especially the ones who really preach the truth unconditionally, lovingly, nothing expected in return. So slandering and gossiping, telling all wrong information about a master and me, for example, is nothing compared with many other things that you could die from right away by your own so-called disciples. Because they didn't come in there to have a real initiation or practice. They just came in for fun also, or curiosity, or take it for granted because it's so easy. They didn't have to go to the Himalaya, climb the mountain, and you can sleep down and die any time to ask for the truth. They didn't have to go all over the world to keep looking for the best method for themselves or to help others. No, they didn't have to. They stay in their own comfortable house, aircon and all. And I come to their house or their city or town and then preach to them free of charge, free of any condition at all. So they think, oh, it's cheap, so easy. <sighs> So only the false masters can live happily. The real masters suffer all the time from anything, anytime. Even <laughs> if you have a non-profit organization already approved by the government, sometimes even the government or the president still accuses you of not paying tax, evading tax, something like that. Yeah, it happened. It happened a real story, in my story, in my life also, for example, like that. And even if you take care of yourself, you make business, you have your money, and you put money in the bank, when you want to take money out, they can turn away from you, against you, and say that some of your money comes from Singapore, and they don't allow you because Singapore is a Muslim country. I know you don't believe that. But in the name of God, I tell you all the truth, nothing but the truth. What for I tell you all that? I would not never know that it could happen if it didn't happen. I would not imagine in my younger time, in my more innocent time and more trusting time, I could never imagine such thing happening to me. Oh, many, many more, many, many more. 